Here we're using another strategy with recursion and this time appending to a list. It's very similar to the previous one of accumulating. Again, we're going to use the car and cooter. This time we're adding the first parameter list to the second parameter list. So the second parameter is going to be the base list we're going to be adding to that. The base case is always looking for an empty list. We can return the rest of the list, which is going to be the second parameter. Uh, again, just like previously, there's going to be many calls in the stack. They're going to be waiting for the previous one until we get to the end of the list. Then it'll all collapse and we'll have a new answer. I want to show you the example of the advanced append function. Now, I put a number one because I'm going to show you a second one later on. But notice it's somewhat simple. We only have two conditions with this. We only have the null for a list one. Again, if it is null, we're done adding all of this one into list two. We just return list two. Everything's done. Otherwise, we're going to cons. You remember what cons is the first element in list one, and then we'll continue with the rest of the append getting to the other elements in list one to go ahead and finish out the appenditure. Normally I do a call stack and a value stack and I'm going to do something similar but I want to draw it out for you a little bit more in detail here. The call stack is going to look exactly the same. Notice my base call was the append x, y, and z and it's going to be 2 a lowercase b and c. So eventually the list is going to be the x, y, z, a lowercase b and c. Notice how it shrinks eventually and we only do four steps because again Remember, when we finally reach that list number one has no elements left, then we're finished. That should make sense. So let me show you what the value stack will look like. So in step number one, we have the list on the left-hand side that we're about to add an element from and into. We have our cons car one, which is going to be the x, and then we're going to append it to the rest of the list. Now that box on the right-hand side here that's because I'm not done yet. We have to wait until we're totally finished with everything. But right now I'm using a cons, which is just below that number two, which is condition number two. And one of those links is to the X. The other link is incomplete yet because that's waiting for the rest of the calls to be done. Here's the second step. Same exact idea. Notice it, well, it's recursive, so it's going to look exactly the same. But it's kind of neat because the first one with X was waiting for the next one. Well, you can start to see things forming here. But notice I still don't have everything yet. I'm still missing the Z. So I still have an incomplete box yet. Notice that I'm working with condition number two because the list is not empty quite yet. Here's our value stack, step number three. Same idea. We got the Z. We are waiting for until we get to the end of the list. And here's stack step number four. Finally, we reach the condition of number one because X, Y, Z was the original list that we're going to add to A, B, C. There's nothing left. We've already taken care of X, Y, and Z. So that's why we reach the null, and that's condition number one. Now, in condition number one, notice all it does is it returns list number two, which was A, B, and C. Because the previous call had a cons that was linking one to Z and the other one to whatever the result was in the next call, that's how we get our entire list together.